T'as pas intérêt. T'as pas intérêt à se gérer ça. Are we set? Are we set? Okay, so on your mark, <laughs> let's go. Good morning. So this is our last uh, school day. We still have a very nice uh, program uh, to offer you today, this morning. And it starts by a lecture from uh, Miriam Rad Nakle from University of Balamund, uh, Lebanon. And she'll be uh, in talking about, <laughs> no, applause, yes, uh, you, you can, of course, uh, talking about uh, air quality and health in Beirut. And, uh, uh, well, we'll see after what we have as a program, but just to let you know that since you've prepared yesterday some case studies, uh, with the, um, with uh, Constantinos Macris, and we had decided yesterday that you would be uh, show, showing us what are your results, what are your, uh, the results of your work, and there will be half an hour after the talk of uh, uh, Miriam uh, to, for you to introduce uh, the results of your, uh, your studies. So uh, be ready, okay? So enjoy, see you. Good morning. Before I start, I just want to thank the organizer for inviting me and uh, thank you for this interesting uh, workshop. Uh, as Eric said, I will uh, give you an idea what we did in Lebanon regarding the BAF study, which is the uh, air pollution, uh, with the study of effect of air pollution in Beirut. So I will give you a feedback on the background that we had before the study. And then we will talk about the methodology that we followed in BAF, and then the result, and we will finish with the conclusion. So before I start, this is just uh, for you to know where uh, we can locate Lebanon. And uh, as you can see from, uh, from the photo that we have two, uh, sorry. We have two major hills in, uh, in Beirut, because this is Beirut that, we, that you saw here. So we have two hills in Beirut. And uh, before we started the study, we had uh, several uh, data and several reference that showed that we have a high level of major uh, outdoor air pollutants. Uh, they were documented till 2012, the, the, the date or the year when, when we started the study. And uh, the health effect at that date wasn't really studied and wasn't really discovered. So uh, at this level, as we said uh, yesterday, me and Raymond and uh, other colleagues from Lebanon, uh, we have sort of lack in national uh, strategy. And if I will not use the word lack, we have insufficient, let's say, uh, legislations. And when you come uh, from different hills next to Beirut, you can see air pollution by naked eye. So it's not really, we, 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 it's not really uh, a difficult thing to know that we have uh, high levels of uh, air pollution. Uh, we proved, or uh, several studies proved, that we have high levels of PM and NO2, and we exceeded the WHO level at, at that time, and we're still exceeding the, these standards. Uh, as uh, we said also last, uh, yesterday, uh, the roles and responsibilities are not really defined reg uh, regarding air pollution and even waste management. And uh, since we have all the pollutants that are identified, and especially the source of pollutants were identified, so it was time at, in 2011 and 2012 to start thinking about the health effect of air pollution. So this is uh, just to give you an idea about Beirut. Um, we have, here, here you have uh, Beirut governate. So, sorry. Okay. So here you have Beirut governate. And uh, as you may know, Beirut is the capital of Lebanon, so uh, it has a, a, a 20 uh, kilometer square of uh, surface, and uh, it has a high density of uh, population. And you have to know also that we attract, it attract, attracts millions of vehicles per day. So, uh, and plus, we don't have really a good uh, public transportation system, so people are obliged to take their private cars. 
So this is Beirut, this is Beirut Governate, part of it. And just to give you an idea about the traffic, so this is a typical uh, heavy traffic that we can face uh, on daily basis in the morning and in the evening. Uh, this is the high density of building, and this, is, uh, this photo is taken from a hill next to Beirut, so you can see the uh, air pollution here, so we can, it's uh, really visible by naked eye. So here you have more important characteristic of the city. So uh, we said yesterday that it's very important to define the city, the topography, climate, etc. So we have a Mediterranean climate, and we have high humidity average around 60%. And what's really important to know that inside the city, and I don't know if you noticed, we have really uh, very high uh, buildings, and we have what we call uh, canyon streets. So we have narrow streets and very high buildings without any uh, control on these uh, buildings. So uh, as a result, we have what we call, a, we, 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 the air pollution is recycled inside the city. Um, before we started, we did also a sort of uh, literature review just to define uh, the impact of, uh, of the degradation of, uh, of air in Beirut. And based on the WHO, we have uh, 170 million uh, of dollars per year as cost of uh, uh, air quality degradation and 26 million per year uh, of health effects. Uh, if I have to talk about the health system in Lebanon, uh, today it's different than when we started in 2011, and in 2011 it's also different than in 2016 or 2008. But you have to know that we have a, uh, the system was really fragmented and it uh, uh, passed by different phase where it was restructured, but uh, I will go back to the same idea that we have, we don't have collaboration between ministries, between the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Health, so that's why we have this lag in the legislation and lag in the responsibilities related to, uh, to the management of air pollution or management of uh, uh, waste or waste. So, and as a, uh, as a fact, we have, uh, we have high levels of uh, particles in the city, based also on the WHO reference. So as a, as a result of this assessment, we decided that we need to start uh, studying uh, the health effect uh, of air pollution uh, on health in, Be uh, sorry, uh, in Beirut. And one of the main objective was, as uh, we saw in the case study yesterday with Constantinos, we need to review what do we have, what do we have as uh, data as air pollution data, as health data. So we did the same brainstorming that you did yesterday in the exercise. Uh, we had to review all of this information and we found that we need to develop what we call a methodology or a protocol uh, adequate for Lebanon because we cannot use information uh, used, let's say, in US or in Europe because we have different contexts. So the first uh, th thing to develop was the protocol. We decided to study also the relation between high levels of air pollution and health effects and to estimate the cost. And you'll see that we couldn't yet uh, estimate the cost because, because we didn't finish yet the second phase of the uh, study. So uh, when we were discussing the source of information, we had to conduct a pilot study because we cannot move into a general study before testing it. And it was really interesting because we discovered a lot of things. And one of the uh, important points that we faced that we have several sources of data at the level of the hospital. And I guess we discussed this uh, uh, in the last few days. Uh, we took two hospitals, one university hospital and one uh, private hospital uh, with uh, almost uh, 50 beds and the university hospital around 300 beds. And we followed the, uh, we, we tested the protocol as data collection and specifically health uh, indicators. And we found that we have different source of data in, in these hospitals, in these two hospitals. And it's applicable, applicable to all hospitals. So you can see that we have uh, a file or a registry for, uh, for uh, uh, the health uh, providers or for nurses, let's say. We have a register for, uh, for residents and we have a register for, for the pharmacy and we have the files of the insurance, we have the files of, uh, of the emergency department and so we have different sources of data. We had to study these, uh, these sources in order to define what's the best between these sources and so we can get our uh, information. It's important to note that the insurance files were com complete 
So if we had to choose or the best source of data for us was the uh, insurance uh, system or insurance information, but uh, 50, only 15% of people were, uh, in Lebanon are insured in the private companies. So it wasn't really a good uh, choice for us. So we went and, uh, and we, we took the choice of following emergency department registries because it's more complete compared to other uh, source of data. And you need to know that we don't have electronic records, so everything was uh, written on, in files and registers, so we had to take this information manually and then uh, uh, we did the data entry and data validation. So this is the protocol that we developed uh, after the uh, pilot study. So uh, here you have different uh, input because we need to, in order to integrate the patient in the study, we need to evaluate different, uh, different criteria. The first one is the first uh, cause for the patient to be accepted or to be uh, uh, taken in the emergency room. And then we have the diagnosis and then the treatment, the um, medical doctor, and you have also the uh, medication or uh, and we took the name of the physician because we thought if we lose any of these data, we can check with the, uh, with the uh, physician if he has a certain case that, uh, that we need. So this is a general study. So we co collected data, uh, air pollution data. We, we will see now how we can uh, collect it. Health data, uh, we did the data entry. We validated the two indicators by experts, and then we moved to the analysis. So we did a descriptive analysis before the uh, association analysis, and we validated the results, and you'll see now what kind of results we have. So uh, to move on with the steps of, uh, of the protocol, for air pollution, uh, we have in Beirut, at that time, we had only in Beirut three stations that measure the pollution, and it's a, a routine measurement, so we have uh, the concentration of uh, pollutant on daily basis, it's an hourly measurement, and here you can see that we can have the data by day, and we have the average of PM10, PM2.5 for uh, temperature and humidity. And this is how we collected the data. This is a, a validated version of data. And what you have here in red, I took uh, this example just to show that here we have missing data that we replaced by the mean of uh, the month. So the expert uh, uh, decided to replace it by the mean and we followed several studies to, to decide on this. So we had three stations and you need to know that we have also passive tubes that measure uh, noxes but we didn't really, uh, we couldn't really uh, use this one because we wanted uh, the concentration on daily basis because we want to link it uh, to the health indicators collected on daily basis. So for the health indicators, we had to uh, collect data from a specific uh, zone in Beirut, which is uh, uh, Beirut Governate. So you can see here Beirut Governate. We had 19 hospitals, but we had to follow a certain criteria in order to conduct the study. So uh, we had only nine uh, hospitals eligible to conduct, uh, to be in the study or to participate in the study, but, but the red ones here uh, have a very strict system. And we were talking yesterday about perseverance and how to, we should be committed to our study and believe in our study. And we spent almost one year to convince them if they, will, if they want to, to participate. And we ended up only with, with seven, but uh, the seven cover 72% of, uh, of the bed in Beirut. Because when you work in hospital, it's more important to cover the number of beds. And, uh, and we have several uh, university hospitals in these uh, uh, seven hospitals. So this is the area that we chose to work on. Uh, this is how we collected data, sorry. So here you have, I just want to show you the form that we used to collect data. Uh, it's not really an advanced uh, model to use, but uh, in the contest that we had, it was interesting because we, we trained people how to use, how, how to collect data. We had here the number of uh, patients, the ID, 
we have the age, uh, gender, and we have what was the first cause to be admitted in the hospital, the final diagnosis, the treatment, and what happened to, uh, to the patient. And here you have all the uh, important, uh, most important uh, indicators that we need to collect. And it was filled by residents and uh, physicians because, as I told you yesterday, I cannot uh, access this uh, information. To, to tell you that, we wanted to add more important information, but we had to collect anonymous data. And we couldn't contact uh, the patient. So this was the condition to conduct the study. We cannot contact, uh, contact patient. And if we wanted to contact patient, we had to go through consent uh, form and consent from patient. And we couldn't deal with this because we wanted to cover um, more important zones and more important number of uh, patients. So after conducting the study and the pilot, we went, this is not really friendly, but we went to a more important data management for health indicators where you can have different data set and different entries to, for the uh, motif or the first uh, cause uh, for admission. And this is just to, uh, uh, to clean the data and to see if we can keep the patient inside our database or it should be uh, eliminated from the database. Uh, here you can have an idea of how, uh, how we classified the categories of, uh, of uh, symptoms and uh, you have uh, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, and which is important and uh, uh, we discussed it last, uh, yeah, last time. We focused also on uh, skin allergic disease because it was uh, uh, mentioned in the literature review. And we also worked on cerebrovascular disease, but as in the second phase, we stopped collecting data related to cerebrovascular disease because we found that it's not really uh, significant. So these are uh, the classifications. Here you can see that we have different categories and we match different categories uh, of uh, uh, disease. And uh, of course, we classified the, when, we, when we conducted the, the, uh, the data management, we classified the diagnosis and the cases by ICD, the following ICD-10 in order to compare it to international studies. This is a kind of uh, final table in order to use it for uh, association analysis. So here you have all the, uh, if you want the data by day, because uh, here, I, just to mention something, when we collect data, if you remember the form that I showed you, we collect data by patient. But when we have to calculate or when we have to move on and search for association, we need to have the average per day. So that's why we ended up by having the unit as day. And then we have different uh, kind of, uh, uh, the different categories of disease. This is for the category less than 16 years old. And we have here, uh, the uh, other kind of uh, information. And this is the final table where you have all the indicators with, uh, with the uh, poll pollutants so we can measure them. Uh, at the general study, we had, we talked about uh, homogeneous exposure yesterday. Here we had to follow AFIA protocol and to consider that since Beirut is a, a small area, we, and we uh, validated this by the, by the street station that we have. So we considered that we have a sort of homogeneous exposure and we followed a sort of cohort because though we have, we, since we're in the same area, so everybody was exposed to air pollution and those who developed the disease or developed the outcome were admitted to the hospital. So this is the uh, Poisson regression based on GAM model. So we took into consideration the pollutant, seasonality, the trend of disease, the holidays, because we're talking about the city and usually, uh, especially in the summer, people don't stay in the city. So we had to take into consideration holidays, weekends and weekdays and the flu period in our uh, model. And this model let us uh, uh, estimate the relative risk and to uh, estimate the short term effect of air pollution. So this is the most important part of the study, I guess. Here you have the results for 2012, and it's, uh, it's still the same till this year. So for PM10, we exceeded the limit by 151%, and for PM2.5, 200%. And uh, if you remember, we said that we cannot exceed more than three days per year. So 
So we had we, we exceeded the limits uh, 133 days and 129 days. And just to tell you that we followed WHO because our standards were uh, really more important and very high compared to to WHO and to compare also with the international studies. So here are the characteristics of emergency hospital admissions uh, for different kind of disease and per, uh, per gender. And this is a descriptive result that we started with. If you can see here, we have a kind of uh, a peak between uh, June and July, and it was really uh, surprising because normally we don't have such, uh, such number of admission, especially when we talk about respiratory disease at this time. So we had, you can see uh, that we have a sort of kind of correlation between the particles and the admissions related to respiratory disease. Here you have the results of the association. If you can see that, uh, and when I saw the poster of Kouame in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, we saw that you have almost the same results, especially for uh, elderly groups that you have uh, 1.036 for respiratory disease. And we have also for, uh, for the adult 10, uh, uh, sorry, 0 0.013. Uh, what was interesting in, the, in this part is that for uh, children, and elderly group, we had the effect on the same day without any lag. But when it comes to adults, we had a certain lag of six to seven uh, days. And uh, I was uh, talking with colleagues from Iran yesterday, and I uh, told them that it was comparable to the same situation in Tehran, and it's due to cultural, um, cultural uh, background. Because, you know, we have this uh, culture that we're uh, really close to uh, doctors and physicians, and we can call them if we're suffering from something, we can call them, or we can uh, go and uh, get some medication from the pharmacy. So uh, it delays the detection of the admission in the uh, emergency room. So we had significant uh, association with the, uh, with the respiratory disease, but for the admission for cardiovascular disease for adults and elderly group, we, had to, we have to wait till, this, the, till phase two in order to confirm if we have really an, an association, because here it, here it was barely, uh, barely significant, because, but we cannot confirm that uh, it's significant. Here you have the contour plot of the results. And this is the uh, uh, last part uh, that we were surprised by. It's more related to skin allergic disease. And it was really uh, we, uh, more important in the uh, group of less than 16 years old. So we had uh, 4.5, 4.10 for PM 2.5 uh, as relative risk, and 16% and 18% uh, with a lag of uh, two to three days for PM 10. So uh, it was really surprising for us, and we saw that in other li literature review, they also confirmed that there is a link between skin disease, and mainly it was uh, urticaria. Uh, to finish, uh, we, I have to tell you that we compared the results with other results just to make sure that we have, uh, we have the same uh, relative risk compared to other international studies. And we got the same, uh, almost the same relative risk compared to uh, studies in US and Hong Kong and in European cities, and spe especially after our project. So, uh, and to apply what we saw uh, with several uh, speakers uh, in the last few days, uh, we tried also to uh, calculate the attributable risk. Uh, we're not really uh, convinced to do it since we only have one study in Lebanon that conducted the relative risk, but we, we wanted to try just to know how can, uh, what, what, uh, what's the really, uh, or what's the, what percentage can affect uh, the risk uh, from the air pollution. So uh, we took the group of less than 16 uh, years old and we had 369 cases that could be avoided if we have controls on uh, air pollution or good uh, management of, uh, of air pollution. And for the cases related to skin allergic disease, we could, we could have been avoided 40 cases if we work on uh, the standards and on the uh, limits related to particles PM 2.5 and PM 10. So uh, to finish with the presentation, uh, from the beginning of the week, we said that we cannot separate the 
external environment or ambient air from uh, indoor air pollution, and we cannot isolate ourselves uh, and uh, to avoid inhaling uh, uh, pollutant. So uh, in parallel, we have lots of information related to the health effects. But in countries like Lebanon, we still have very limited actions to, uh, to put and to, to work on. So um, for our study, it was really a first complete initiative because we had several extrapolations uh, uh, and uh, several trials to estimate the, estimate the relative uh, the effect of air pollution. But it was the first time to collect this information and try to correlate it. Uh, the second phase will cover three years. And uh, we, we were really happy to, uh, to, to work on a protocol that was applied in other countries like in Cote d'Ivoire and uh, uh, mainly in Cote d'Ivoire and we have another project now uh, with Isabella. And we, uh, we, we had the significant association. Our uh, ob objective now is to estimate the cost. It's, it will still uh, an objective, but we moved a bit uh, to the individual, the individual exposure with the project, the, with the new project that we're uh, planning to do, which is healthy, uh, to compare or to study the indoor environment or indoor air pollution in the schools and to study the effects on uh, the respiratory, respiratory health of students or, sorry, on, um, uh, yes, on students and on uh, the, their school performance. And we will start also the multi-center studies with uh, multi-pollutants. We hope to, to do it in the next few years. I will finish with this. Even if the effects of pollutants are often invisible or hardly detectable, yet they are real, and we need to do something for this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miriam. And uh, the camera, sorry, yeah. So is there any question in the room, please? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have just one question, curiosity. Uh, do you have any, uh, let's say, uh, causal association between PM10 and skin irritation if there is some sort of uh, mechanism? I mean, it's the pH of PM in Lebanon, it's the composition, it's something, I'd, or it just what? Um, I wish I can answer this question because I really, <laughs> I really want to, to, to know because uh, well, uh, the study that we conducted is, is descriptive and this is the first study so we cannot talk about causality, it's a descriptive study but we, we really want to know, we, I, I checked several references and they did a cross-sectional studies uh, and they linked the skin disease with the exposure to air pollution but we don't really have... Uh, the power or uh, the results, the strong result to see that, it, to say that it's cause, uh, we have causality, you know. Thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, I remark that uh, the most of disease that you have shortlisted are uh, either uh, respiratory or uh, cardiovascular. So, uh, have you uh, looked for another uh, disease that, that can be related to uh, PM, uh, PM extra concentration? So, we took cardiovascular disease, uh, respiratory disease, uh, cerebrovascular, and skin disease, skin allergic disease. And the first phase, we collected also data related to uh, the GI tract problems, just to control uh, the data collection to see if we're, uh, we're doing well. And then we, uh, at the end, in the second phase, we, we stopped because we, we changed a bit the protocol. Mm. Thank you, Miriam, for your presentation. I just wanted to know, uh, during the, the st your study, you considered the measurement, or you were, you were forced to do a, a dispersion modeling to assess the health impact. We, we considered what, sorry, can you repeat? You did uh, some measurements yes, on streets and places. No. And 
continue, sorry. It's not really measurement. We had the stations, uh, background stations, and we had uh, a routine monitoring. So we had continuous measurement uh, on daily basis. Okay. Okay. This is a question. <laughs> I just wanted to know if uh, to assess the impact, the health impact, you, you were forced to do uh, dispersion modeling to, to find out the concentration on a particular place where you did not have a uh, uh, measurement did by the devices you, you had? Okay, I, I, I really didn't get, but we didn't, we didn't work on a dispersion model. We just had the concentration, the daily concentration, and it was mainly uh, measured uh, every 15 minutes, and we, we got the average every hour, and then for, uh, for the whole day, and we correlated these, uh, inf uh, these data, the daily measure of uh, air pollutant was a daily uh, count in the hospitals for admissions for respiratory, cardiovascular, and uh, other... Uh, my, point is, my point was to know if the, the measurements were near to the hospital. Uh, not really near to the hospital. It was in, at three different levels in Beirut. And you had, uh, if I go back, I can show you. Uh, you remember the map of Beirut? So here you have the different, uh, the different passive tubes. And here are the stations. And you, ha you have the hospitals all over, all over the city. It's not really next to the hospital. Because you don't have, uh, we're not only measuring for the hospital, we're measuring for everybody living in Beirut. So they might be next to the hospital or living uh, in another uh, region, but still in Beirut. Yes. I, I have uh, two questions. First, in the methodology that you have uh, reported, you talked about model. It was just regression. Uh, regression, yes. Regression, okay. Another question that uh, they use the, 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 the choice of the sampling site, the hospital, it was depend on the, the density of the population uh, living there, or there are some criteria, other criteria that you have? Uh, we didn't go through a sample, not really, uh, not we didn't go through a sample size, but we fixed. Uh, we collected data on daily basis. We didn't, we didn't uh, specify a number uh, of uh, patients. So for the first year, we had almost uh, 1,100, uh, sorry, 11,540 patients for the first year. So we collected all the information that we have from the hospitals in order to, to get uh, an important uh, pool of information. We didn't fix it. We didn't fix. Uh... Okay, thank you, Miriam, for a very good presentation. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, I'm also curious, like Maur uh, Maurizio, uh, about the skin irritation that you get a Me too. high <laughs> relative risk in the, but you all only get the high relative risk on the children under 16, right? Not, yes. Uh, not yes. above that year. So I'm wondering, do you have uh, support data on your, on your patient? I mean, in the questionnaire, whether they're living habits, something like that for the water or soil, they get in touch something like the environmental uh, surrounding. That's the first question. Yes. And the second one, I'm interested in the model you use for the estimation of the relative risk. Maybe you could tell me more about the model. Thank okay. you. Okay. For, I'll start with the first question related to uh, skin allergic disease. Mainly, we we can't have any information related to patients. When, when we started the study, as I uh, uh, told him, it was descriptive study. We had to collect data. We had to start from uh, from uh, somewhere. So we took descriptive. Uh, sorry, we, we took this information and. The main condition was to be anonymous, to cover such number of population. 
uh, we cannot have, if, if we have to go through a questionnaire, as I said, we have to go through a consent uh, uh, form and uh, all the protocol will be different and we'll have to be more uh, precise and more focused in a certain area or one or two hospitals to follow up. But it could be more important to have all of this information and link it, but we didn't have the, this privilege, uh, privilege at that time. And I guess we still not have this privilege at, uh, because we're, uh, we're trying to, uh, to study the effect in a totally different way now after the study because we spent a lot of money, lots of time, and lots of effort because it was a, really a huge study at, uh, at the level of Beirut. Uh, for the second, the, sorry, <laughs> I forgot the second question. For the second question, we uh, 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 for the model that we use, it's Poisson regression, and uh, uh, if you if you mo want, need more information, you have here at the end of the lecture the reference. Sorry, the reference of the model because we used uh, different uh, different models used in uh, in Europe, and uh, here are the article that we. Uh, where you can find all the, all the details related to the model. It's the third one. And you have all the uh, statistical details. And uh, usually in this model, what we need to know is that we have a few modification or few change compared to the general population. That's why we can apply regression, uh, Poisson regression model. And this change will let us work on a sort of, uh, let me show you the equation. Uh, this is the log of hospital admission where you have a constant and you take into consideration the time, the particles, the temperature, the humidity, and the day of the week. And you can integrate it in the model and get your relative risk. Okay. Um, <coughs> good morning. Thank you for this uh, very... Uh, I saw uh, Raymond, okay. Yes, yes. I think the presentation is very... Uh, informative and very relevant to my work. Thank you. So um, my first question would be, did you consider the level of hospital? I'm saying this because for my study, for example, if you did take um, data from a level five or a referral hospital, then there's a chance that the patients who are seen are from outside your area of study. So that would be my first question. The next would be really, I would want to know, what's your take on, uh, I know yesterday we talked of how hard it is to get health data, but uh, if you attempt to publish this kind of work, they will say it's just at a descriptive level, that it doesn't say anything about causality, so politely they'll be telling you it's nothing. So I would want to know what's your take and any other person who's in this room. This is a, a very important. I'm going to answer the second question because it's really a very challenging situation. And we face this uh, every time we have to publish something because um, when we come here, let's say, when we come in to, to Europe and we attend sessions, we, we dream about lots of studies to conduct in Lebanon. And it takes us time, uh, not, in, not only in Lebanon, in uh, all develop, uh, the developing countries. So it takes us time to, to develop such studies. And when it's time to conduct it and we have to publish something, it will be difficult to publish it because it's an old, uh, not really old, but it's not really sexy and it's not really attractive to, artic to, uh, to journals to publish because it's more related to a certain country. We face lots of challenges related to this thing, especially for the protocol. And uh, for the result, it was, it was a bit different because we followed the FAA protocol, so it was comparable. And we, we, we published the five articles uh, for, uh, for BAF, but it wasn't really easy. One of the articles took us one, uh, one year and a half to be accepted, not for the quality of the article, but because it was more related to Lebanon or to developing country, and it's not, it cannot be really interesting for other countries. Uh, regarding the level of hospitals, uh, it's also a very interesting question, and I was asked about it when I did the def uh, defense of my thesis. Um, we worked on the indicators, on the health indicators to avoid uh, having such, uh, such problems. And if you know the context of Beirut, you will not have, let's say, someone who has asthma 
uh, crisis coming to the hospital in Beirut, someone living in the south or someone living in the north will not take one hour and a half to, uh, to come to Beirut to, uh, to get medication. So the uh, protocol and the indicators used limited this, uh, this challenge. Perfect. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think your measurement based on particles, 2.5 and 10. Yes. But you mentioned in the presentation uh, the all pollutants from Beirut from the cars. And not only cars. Did I say this? Yes, in the first. Okay. Because uh, I didn't put the percentage. Mainly we have cars, constructions, and we have a, a part of it coming from dust from the Gulf. Country. Yes, but, so, but uh, the more important it's vegan. It's I, I suggested if you add some measurements about CO, monoxide, carbon, mm -hmm. this is the very important uh, pollutant from the cars. That's true. Because you mentioned there is million car every day in Beirut, Plus, and this is measurement for CO will be very useful if you add. That's true. We can, of course, we can take it in consideration. As I said in the, in the last slide, our objective is to uh, start thinking about multimodals and at the same time multi-centric uh, uh, studies. So in different regions in Lebanon, at the same time, different kind of uh, pollutants. Okay, Thank you. thank you. Last question. Morning, thank you for that wonderful presentation. I would like to know whether you, you cited or lo you located a control, a place where you, you monitored for background in your study. And if you did, how different were the, you know, the other locations, the levels from the background or the control? Thank you. Okay, uh, this part was conducted before I started the study because they started the measurement of air pollution uh, in 2004 in collaboration with the uh, Ile-de-France uh, region. So they worked on measuring these, uh, these difference between the background and the, if you want, the proximity sites. And when I started the study, we had a sort of, uh, uh, I'm not going to say proxy, but we, we agree, uh, the studies and the publications related to Beirut confirm that we have a homogeneous situation, the, a homogeneous concentration where we can, uh, we can take the results of the three stations and uh, not think about the background or the proximity because it's a representative measure for the whole city. I don't know if I answered your uh, question or not. Not, not really, because I think yesterday Francois made the point mm. that usually prior to um, monitoring, there is the need for some reference, you know, data. That is the ah, background. It's the WHO. We use the WHO reference. So we calculated the relative risk for uh, an increase of 10 microgram per cubic meter from the WHO standards. We, we didn't take the zero. So if, if it was PM 2.5 or PM 10, it depends. It was 20 or 10 micrograms, uh, 50 and uh, uh, 20. Sorry, sorry. You want to add something, Francois? OK, just to. OK, so this is really the last one, OK? <laughs> and then there will be the other last one. <laughs> <laughs> It's a comment uh, on, this, on this question. Here they are looking at uh, hospital uh, entrance all over the city. So they need to have a, this kind of background information on the uh, regional pollution because they cannot relate a given hospital to a, a given point source. So this is why they took these uh, three kind of background stations and averaged the, the load. Okay, so thank you very much, Miriam. Now it's time to move to the second uh, lecture. So this is a lecture by Carla, Carla Ancona, uh, about biomonitoring and epi studies on contaminated sites. So there is also this uh, little uh, debriefing of the case study of yesterday. So 
Uh, no, Carla, you just uh, manage it like you wanted to manage it. You're okay. the one. I mean, we can maybe have an, we have two or three groups that have to present. How many? Three. So let's start with the first one for a few minutes. I mean, you have uh, five to six minutes, one second to come here, which is the first, the second one. Okay. Uh, the Maurizio, yours. Your. Okay. Ready? I mean, in order you would like to. Uh, Only yes. one. Thank you. Eric? Okay. Eric? I don't know you where can. you 